message for you. And it's very, very short. Amen. When I say short, it's short. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> they don't believe me. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Believe in God. Believe also in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Uh, but it, it's, uh, the theme is very simple. Time. Amen? Amen? Time for everything. Time for everything. You know, under the sun, there's a time for everything. I want you to understand that everything has its time. And in due season, God is going to do what he has to do. But we, as children of God, what season are we in? And we need to really understand the season that we are in. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that in this season that we are in, I call it a season where a lot of new things are being born. Like we have seen a new baby born. Hallelujah. So, this baby has come into the world by the decision of two people. They, they um, came together and then decided that we want to have a baby. But if you listen to them carefully, even by, by signs, this wasn't going to be possible. So one thing we need to really understand is that for us to really have physical uh, uh, um, children, the child that has been born did not choose her parents. Did he? Uh, did she? And did not choose which city he, she was going to be born. Did not choose when she's going to be born. Hallelujah. It's all, I mean, God himself doing it. But with us, hallelujah, there is another birth. There is another birth that we have to make a choice. I said, this child did not have a choice where she was going. But for us, we have a choice to make. If we will, there are two kinds of birth. There is a physical birth and a spiritual birth. And in the spiritual birth, that's what I'm going to talk to you about this morning. I'm going to talk to you about the spiritual birth. Because many of us, we have forgotten that we are in a season, in a time where the end is so close. Jesus spoke to uh, Nicodemus. Let's go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3 quickly. Like I said, it's going to be very short. John chapter 3. And let's read from verse, verse 1. Let's read from verse 1. Now, there was a first sea, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, this is where the conversation gets interesting. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. What? I have been born. My mother gave birth to me. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Jesus? Now go to verse 4. How can someone be born when they are old? I, my mother gave birth to me. I didn't have a say where I was born, but I was born anyway. And nobody, I mean, how can you be born twice? Amen. And you said, and he didn't say you have to be born. He said you have to be born again. Because you've been born once. Where you had no choice. Where you had no, you did not contribute to anything. Hallelujah. But that is to bring you into this world. Then there is another birth 
that takes you to eternal life. Your first birth takes you to a, a temporal life, a life of hardship and difficulties, a life of challenges, a life, and you didn't choose it. But now, you've been given an opportunity to make a choice into a life that is eternal where there is no suffering, no pain, no struggle. I still do not understand why we cannot make that decision. I still can't understand. Let me ask you a very simple question. I'll ask the elders first. But I won't ask the chief because as for chiefs, you don't really ask them questions in public like that. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'll ask somebody who is, uh, okay. Um, uncle. Uh, no, yes, uncle. Yes, you. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Take the mic. If you were supposed to make a decision where you, were, you, you have to be born, where will you decide? That you should be born. I will decide to be born outside Ghana. <laughs> Hallelujah. In fact, what country will you choose? <laughs> Britain, please. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. She, look, if, if I give everybody on this line an opportunity, Auntie, where? Yes. What has Ghana done wrong? <laughs> what has Ghana done wrong? Hallelujah. Are you where will you want to be born? Apostle <laughs> Ghana here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says he wants Ghana. <laughs> But even now, he wants to go. I, 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 you know, you, we have to be sometimes truthful to ourselves. Says you are too old to me or pervisa. Hallelujah. If you want to be born in Ghana, why don't you want to stay here? Mami uh, You, you, you. Where, where? Uh huh. No, no. Uh huh. Did you hear? Canada. I don't know how they choose the countries. <laughs> what, what, are, what is the criteria? What, what, what is it? What, what, is, what is it? Joseph, where? Huh? Palace. <laughs> My goodness. He is not only choosing a country, but he wants to belong to the royal family. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, listen to me. Listen to me. If we were given a chance... We were all going to choose, even your parents, even if, you, if God decides that Ghana, but choose a parent. Who are you going to choose? You will look, you, you, you will look at the billionaire's list and then begin to search through it and then choose some, the, the richest one. Hallelujah. So, beloved in the Lord, this is where the problem begins. Now, that's your wish. That's what you want. Now, God has given you an opportunity to make a choice. And you're still struggling. God has given you an opportunity. This is not an opportunity just to open your mouth and say anything. It's a, an opportunity to reflect a lot and he says that make a choice where you will spend eternity make a choice when you were coming here you, you couldn't make a choice and you landed the moment you saw the people around you you began to curse I don't know whether God or who hallelujah as a baby some babies refuse to cry when they saw the people around them, they refused to cry because they want to die and go back. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I remember when my son was very small, like six years, we went to the U.S., we went for a holiday, 
And when we, we were coming, he said he won't come. We were, we were in, in, in Charlotte. We, during the period, we went to um, New York and came back. But at that time, oh, the plane, they were only white. You know, it's a white airport and everything. So no problem. Now, when we were coming, he saw plenty blacks. And he said, no, I won't go. Because at the airport, we were coming to Ghana, so you can imagine, Ghanaians. You saw too many blacks. He said, no, 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 I won't go. And we said, oh, we're going to another. He said, no, but we, we were able to get him to understand. And then we did a transit, I think, in uh, wherever, yeah. And uh, there were still, now he saw a lot of white, so he believed us. Amen. Amen. Then we were going to board the plane again and more blacks. He was not too sure, but we were able to convince him. We got to Kotoka. And then they open the plane. It wasn't like this time. You know, this time you go through a tunnel. But at that time, you have to come down a staircase and sit in a bus. The moment we got to the gate, the heat came. They said, no! He said, you will get that. Six years. He said, now he lives in the U.S. He won't come. Hallelujah. The heat you know, in the plane, there is air condition. So it's still cold. So he still thinks he's in America. Then we came to the gate. The heat came at him. No! Then everybody didn't understand. People were like, what's wrong with the boy? Nobody understood what was going on. We understood. He wants to go back. <laughs> Hallelujah. The point is that when he had to make a choice, when he had to make a choice, where to go to school? Where do you think he chose? Yeah, so he's gone back. Hallelujah. From six years, he's always wanting to go back. Beloved, but we have a choice now. We are being called to make a decision. I believe everyone here wants to go to heaven. Now, let's see what Jesus said in verse 3. Jesus said to this man, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. The man did not understand. He said, I've been born already. I am here on this earth. How can I go into my mother's room to be born again? Now, I want you to understand that something happened. Jesus was surprised. And he said, what? You are a teacher? And you don't understand this? How can you teach others? How can you teach others? A teacher, you are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? You don't? Hallelujah. Many of us, we think coming to church makes us Christians. We think coming to church will take us to heaven. Jesus says that until such a time that you are born again, you are not going anywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are asking, so what is born again? What is born again? How can I be born again? Jesus said in verse 5, he said, um, very truly I tell you, no one can enter. Now, the first one in verse 3, he said, no one can see unless you are born again. When he was explaining it, he said, now no one can enter. How many of us want to, want to enter the kingdom of God? Now, he says, you cannot enter until what happens? Unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Kobe and Justina give birth to miracle. It's the flesh. Hallelujah. Flesh gives birth. So your mother giving birth to you is a fleshy thing. It's a worldly thing. It is temporal. It's not eternal. You're going to be here for a season. But there is a destination for each and every one of us, which is eternal. But unfortunately, it's not only one destination. 
There are two places to go. Heaven. I said, and this you need to understand. That unless you are born again, you will go to hell. Unless you are born again, you can't change the gospel. You can't make it different. It's not about unless you are nice. It's not about unless you can, you, can, you can go to America. Unless you can. No, it's not about that. It's about unless you are born again. Hallelujah. Unless they are born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh. But the spirit gives birth to spirit. Hallelujah. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must I said, you what? I said, you what? You what? You must be born again. Many of us, sometimes we think that, oh yeah, but I can do this, I can, I can do that. Unless you are born again. And you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born uh, of water and the spirit. And... Jesus saw this guy was getting confused. He said, listen, verse 8, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Verse 11, very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. Beloved in the Lord, this is a moment that you have a decision to make. You are standing in the valley of decision. You see, it's not about how you can go and come. How much money you have. We are so close to the end of time that it is important that we give you an opportunity to make the one decision that can turn your destiny around forever. One decision that can really confirm because in fact you choose whether you want to go to heaven or hell because it starts with a new birth and Bible says that unless you are born of what and what Bible makes us understand that in uh, Ephesians 5, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 26, the water really washes us. Hallelujah. Can you quickly do that? Do not be quick. Ephesians 5, 26. Hallelujah. Amen. What? Your Bible was refusing to give you that. To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water. Through what? The power of the word brings sanctification. It washes you. So listen to me carefully. The new birth, you need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the word of God. And that word really assures you of where you will spend eternity. It assures you that it doesn't matter what you have done. His blood is able to wash you. But you need that word. No one can make a decision if he is not heard a word. Hallelujah. And the word will cleanse you. And the word will finish its work. And the Holy Spirit takes over. Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, this thing will restore you. This decision will restore you to a relationship with God. Bible makes us understand, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us here, we have sinned and we have come short of the glory of God. And each and every one of us, in order to be restored back to glory, we need to make this one decision. Accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And that is what is called born again. If you are not born again, you cannot enter 
the kingdom of God. Many of us want to enter the kingdom of God, but we don't want to be born again. Now, watch it. If you are born again, it's the beginning of a process. Hallelujah. You are accepted the moment you repent and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you are born again because the word and the spirit begins to work on you and at that moment you are accepted by Jesus and by God. Hallelujah. And when you are accepted, somebody said, I want to be born in Buckingham Palace. If you are born in, and Nana is here, if you are born in a palace, you are trained like a king. Hallelujah. Because you become a prince and you could one day become the king. So you, they begin to train you. Hallelujah. And that training, once you are a royal, you understand. So you go through that process and then you end up being where royals would be. Hallelujah. This born again, Bible says that it brings new creation. You become a new person. And you don't live your life the way that you want to live. You live your life the way he wants you to live. Now, my question to you this morning. Some of you are already saying that, yeah, but I'm born again. Yes, I don't dispute that fact. But I'm going to challenge you this morning. Is your life showing that you are born again? Bible says that he takes us away from sin. Are you still living in sin? Willingly. Bible says that our lives begin to be in another way. We begin to walk. You see, little miracle can never live the life that she was living in the womb again. Let her decide that she's going to attach her uh, umbilical cord to the mother to feed her through that. Will that be possible? Why is it that you are born again but you still live the old life? Because the moment she came out of uh, the mother's womb, that thing has to be cut. It's, it, listen, you, your umbilical cord has to be cut from the world. You can't live the life of the world if you say you are born again. Because Bible says in uh, um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 that you are what? And the old. Tell a little miracle that the old is not gone. He will tell you that you're joking. You're joking. I'm no longer in the womb. I'm not fed no, any longer by the umbilical cord. I am fed through my mouth. Some of us, we say we are born again, but we are still being fed by the umbilical cord. If you are not careful, they're going to throw you in the sea. Try to live your life like that and see whether they will accept you in the house. When they give you food, say, I won't eat. Hey, when they are cutting them, you say, no, 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 I, I won't let you cut. You, you, let's see what your mother will do. Yeah. You come out. Your mother has given birth to you. Now there's something attached and it has to be cut. True or false? Because that's how you used to live your life. But the moment you came out, you can't live that life again. If you want to survive here, if you want to live on this earth, you can't really keep, keep your umbilical cord connected to your mother. It has to be cut. If you want to go to heaven, you have to cut that umbilical cord from the world. Because if you don't, and many of us, we say we are Christians, but our umbilical cords are still attached to the world. Our mind is set here. Our hearts are set here. That's why you are so greedy. You call yourself a Christian. Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 that this lifestyle belongs to the world. Is that not what you are living? Are you sure you are a Christian? I'm going to give you an opportunity this morning to change that about your life. Because you are deceiving yourself in a way that if you are not careful and Jesus comes right now, you are going to go to hell. You don't, want, you don't want to hear this. In fact, the truth is that I can't help it. I have to tell you. I have to let you know 
Why? Because you're living your life deceiving yourself that you are going to heaven, but you are not going anywhere. Your destination is not heaven. Those whose destination is heaven, they have cut the umbilical cord from the world. Bible says that be ye thou separate. And you say, no, I'm not separating. I'm going to still hang on to the world. What is wrong with us? What's the problem? Is it because we didn't know? Is it because we were not aware? Beloved, you have no excuse from today. If you didn't know, you know this morning. I said, if you didn't know, you know this morning. And I give you an opportunity. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Jesus is calling you. He's asking you to make that decision, that choice. You know, because you didn't have a choice, you sometimes complain. Why was I born in Ghana? Why was I born a black? Why was I born poor? But now God has given you an opportunity to make a decision, not where to spend your temporal life, but your eternal life. Heaven or hell, choose this morning. Bible says that choose you this day, whom you serve. But as for me and my house, who serve the Lord. What choices are you making this morning? Bow down your head. Let's pray. Hallelujah. What choices are you making this morning? It's a great opportunity that God is giving to you. Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and I want you to hear me as you are in a mood of prayer. From verse 1, it says, Are God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, beloved in the Lord, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. This is a moment of God's favor. This is a moment of salvation. What choices are you making this morning? Beloved, I want you to understand that as you make this choice this morning, even though a miracle didn't make a choice, but from now, she's a baby and she needs to submit herself to her parents' uh, direction so she can be nurtured to grow. I want you to understand that as you are making this decision this morning, you need to also submit yourself for guidance, for discipleship, for nurturing, so you will know how to walk. Kids are taught how to walk. That is why they can walk. They fall, but they rise because they have help. We all do have help because God gives us help as we come to him. What decision are you making this morning? Jesus is calling you. Reflect and choose this day 